Well, the very first part of the comedy show was a little song. It wasn't fully developed then, but he was about nine years old. And he suddenly started a little dance on the beach in his little tiny swimming trunks. And he sang, the comedy show, the comedy show, the comedy show, the comedy show. And then he told a silly joke. And the entire series has stemmed from that one little bit of film footage. The, all the words weren't written then. We helped develop it into our whole song, which has become the theme tune that everybody knows of the famous comedy show. Comedy show, comedy show. Got funny things that you should know. The comedy show, the comedy show is starting in a mo. That was the extra bit. Of course, we had to get something to rhyme. And we all put our thinking caps on. And when we decided to make it into a series, that was what we came up with. And it was such a catchy little tune that it stuck. And we still use it to this very day. Apart from the fact, of course, that uh, the comedy show is now over, sadly over. And the comedy show was our longest project. It was probably the thing that was the closest, dearest thing to my heart. Even though there are on and off bits of the comedy show, there's bits that I don't like at all, but there's bits I love. And that's kind of something you you have to cope with when you give birth to something. That made sense, of course. And we did it as a complete series, and it worked so much better because it was more consistent. And I feel in the second series, the comedy show really got its niche and it started to heavily feature characters that be return and come back. And um, the rebirth led on to so many other things, spin-offs, uh, other projects, things that we wouldn't initially have attempted then became reality. Yes, the four year break in the comedy shows. It was a long time to have a break, but it was so great to get back to all the old routines and so nice to work with the old routine again and so great to do the comedy show again after such a long break. In that way, the purely, um, what's it called, the, the, the version of Derek and Clive that we did, sound only. With Vengeance and Bitches and Broads. Yes. And I think to a degree, we mastered that. Whereas in the series, Although it was good, we didn't quite hit the mark. I think that's a fair comment. Well, the interesting thing was when we first filmed the first scenes, I was actually quite ill when we first, and I could hardly speak when we first filmed the scenes. Mind you, those scenes ended up on the cutting room floor, but still a most enjoyable part to play. The idea of the teenage doctor has very good concept. Never been tried out before and I think it should have been by the BBC. They should take that one up. <coughs> uh, um, yeah, I was um, doing lots of other things as well. Uh, you know, just assisting the camera work, holding the script for people. It's uh, it's pretty cool watching him. You know, especially the footage afterwards. He says it's um, it's not that good, but um, he doesn't really he doesn't really take the time to actually look at it. I mean, he actually does a lot of good stuff on Doctor. He just doesn't know it. That's all. When we eventually decided to uh, review. 
our ideas for the Doctor Who theme. We took some of the old footage that we'd done before, had some new ideas about it, refilmed some bits. The concept of the Derek and Clive relationship as the Doctor's assistants totally changed. Their personalities swapped. The Doctor was two or three years older and a lot taller. He wore a different outfit. The Master stayed the same. But we managed to, as I said before, from the original concept, have an entire series. And I think it was pretty good. There's some wonderful special effects. There's some wonderful lines. There's some wonderful poignant stories, particularly in family and friends, when in fact all our family are involved. Nick and Mel's Christmas party was good fun. We just sort of recapped everything we'd done so far. We had a big get together, had a bit of a piss up, and we watched a lot of our old footage and stuff and decided to uh, do a bit of a documentary. And it turned out pretty good actually, I would think. Well, at Home of the Reeds was such a good thing to do because it's, it's my family and I do so love my family. It's so nice having them around me and doing things with them. One of my most pleasurable times is when my family are around me. And nine times out of ten, in an eight hour period, a lot of funny things happen. Things that you wouldn't think, things that are genuine, and things that are spontaneous. The only trouble with the programme was, we ended up with about 50 hours of footage. And sifting through it all to make it into a cohesive package was quite a great task. And Nicholas, who was greatly talented in the editing field, was able to put it together into a fantastic montage piece. At Home of the Reeds had two seasons in 2005 and I was going to make a third in 2006 but I decided against it because um, we had too many projects going on in 2005 and I didn't think we could handle it because our projects were getting more ambitious and I was just like let's just leave this project maybe. We could come back to it but so far we haven't. Jackass was one of my son's projects that I wasn't involved in a lot. It was loosely based on the American Jack Arse, which is totally different to Jack Arse. Um, it came about during my son's experiences on his performance related college education. During performing arts, he got together with a few of his friends and they decided to do something together. And they started beating each other around the head with chairs and stuff and made their own British version of Jackass. I do make a couple of minor appearances, but really this project was totally Nicholas's alone, along with his good friend, Elliot. After we'd finished our first year at college, we um... Jackass kind of just ended there. There was two or three specials afterwards, but the Jackass crew disbanded, and it was only kind of me and Elliot in the specials, and that's where we just kind of decided to let it die. Oh and yes, of course, our horror movie. Such a great pleasure to do that. Um, um, only short. About 20 minutes. It could have been a lot longer. But the trouble is, because we're only all together for a limited period of time, we had to make it unique and succinct. And I think we achieved that. We achieved our goal. And the edited version is one of our best works. And of course the crap shows 
probably Nick and Mel's biggest success. Although I have no direct dealings with it, I'm so happy to think that the company I had so much to do with the start of has produced something so successful. Crap shows, yeah, that was a very interesting concept. And uh, the first uh, pilot was really a, an idea about what it would be like if you took all these marvellous programmes that you really liked and totally sent them up. And with this in mind, Crap Shows was born. Um, it did develop a lot more later, but at that first time of the pilot, it was pretty funny, but it was missing something. And um, I think that it's now been found. Crap Shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> and... Um, um, you know, a few sketches, a few writings here and there. Um, I've been trying to uh, convince them, you know, to like accept other people's help in terms of, um, <clears throat> say, ideas because, you know, after a lot of filming that, it does seem to sort of go down a bit. I mean, we can't really remember um, a lot, you know, afterwards, except we watch it and then we remember. But, um, it's coming up with the ideas that's the real problem and they you know, sort of grow more stupider and less and less and some of them don't even make it to the um, planning board because we don't like them but um, you know we'll just see what happens you know keep going keep shoot, uh, you know keep thinking up stuff and uh, hopefully you guys will like it if not well we'll all have to kill ourselves because you people couldn't be satisfied by decent amateur comedy and that's all I have to say on that now we come to Crap Shows, the real show. After the pilot, which is all very exciting and very interesting, it was decided it would be put on a more professional footing. And all the ideas and concepts that came from the pilot fed the new series. The series wasn't very long, but it was long enough to establish at least four or five different characters and different stories. This went on with themes throughout the series until the Christmas special, which in fact was a culmination of the entire series and... And of course, the Steve show. It span off from the comedy show. Such a brilliant production and I was so happy to have been part of it been in a few episodes and um, I hope to be in a few more. Such a great show and such a wonderful star. <laughs> right, Steve's show of course was uh, a direct spin-off of the comedy show. Um, of course there was Bert which is another thing altogether because Bert is a character within the Steve show who is like Steve's alter ego and in a way he takes over the show in to some degrees because there's a lot of Steve in Bert and a lot of Bert in Steve. And I'm very proud of this show and the first series I thought was well a big success and I'm hoping to make the second series as big a success. Patriotism was a project of my son's to do with his college degree. Um, which was quite a good idea and it worked very well. But the end result is pretty stunning, I think. Ah, uh, patriotism. Um, um, yeah, really uh, Elliot and Nick's finest hour, but then again. But, um, well, no. But all the flashback scenes of when we were young were played by my son and Deborah's daughter. The only exception to this, of course, is Lawrence, who plays himself young in a silly wig. And I think that works very well, because it's very silly. And of course, um, 2006, Freddy and the Fuckpuckers. Yes, I love that part. So long have we dreamed of turning it into a film, and it was so great that Nicomel made our dreams come true.
going back to crap shows, the um, Polisher, which was very heavily featured and was a small episode in every single performance of the uh, crap show's original series, became such a defining part that uh, obviously my son thought the concept of that would work well as a, an entire film in one. So using a lot of re-editing, adding some music, adding some dialogue, he has managed to produce a movie of just that particular part of the crap shows. And I have just watched it recently and I think it's excellent. Um, which I, I thought was all right. Yes. Um, <clears throat> uh, hopefully it uh, will turn out okay. So, yeah. We've got Batman. What else have we got? We've got Jim Cartwright's Road, which is only just being announced, by the way. Um, and this brings you to the end. Bye-bye. Oh, before we go, you've been wanting to know what the secret project is. Well, now you're going to find out. Here comes the announcement trailer for the secret project. So, so long, folks. Which is a very interesting project that I'm thoroughly looking forward to. Which has been written for quite a few years, but we've never quite got round to doing it. We're hoping to do it pretty soon. Which I'm very, very looking forward to. Future projects, well, definitely another series of uh, crap shows. I think we could uh, have a, we could see soon a, a film of Saw, Batman, um, <laughs> Derek and Clive special. Of course, uh, Secret Project. And I think Freddy and the Fab Puckers too. After they were famous. Best Friends. Best Friends the movie, which will be our fourth movie. Um, looking forward to that particularly. Uh, okay, <clears throat> future projects. Uh, there's um, this. Um, I'm supposed to be a part of it, and, or like you know, just told they're doing it. You know, that's it. I don't know anything else. Um, Batman Independence, um, that was supposed to be done ages ago, but, um, well, it's like a proper, full-on, cool-style Batman film, and Elliot really wanted to um, <clears throat> be Batman, but um, he has personal reasons for not doing it, so, um, you know, uh, hopefully, uh, sort of, later in the years, um, you know, it's going to get sorted out. Elliot's some really... Yeah, it re uh, Elliot's really happy with this um, story, and he hope it. Um, f he hope he hopes he finds the right people. It's filling the job. Let's see what else. What else is there? Uh, um, you know, this is, this is, um, you listening? People, volunteer. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, you know, things we like to hope happen. Um, you know, a little bit of this, a bit of that, you know. I only keep tabs on the bits um, that they tell me about, unless they haven't told me bits I'm not doing, in which case... That's me. We've got Patriotism, which we're working on still. Uh, um, go sort that one out. Um, and there's the, um, <coughs> the, um... The secret project, and that's Optimus Prime, who just dislocated his ribs. Um, and uh, um, <laughs> don't look at me. I'm I'm in the dark about it. And that's Spider-Man as well, whose eyes glow. Apparently, there you go.